And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. Our panel is here to discuss the political headlines of the week, and we're joined today by Republican consultant Marcus Dallartino and Democratic political consultant Roy Herrera. Thanks both for being here. Let's start first with, uh, you know, uh, the Bible battle uh, and, 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 and the Bible over that. For those, uh, just a quick refresher, there was a Democratic lawmaker who was caught on camera, on video, hiding Bibles. Uh, in the lounge, uh, at, at, in the members only lounge and in the state house. Republicans tr wanted to expel her and came up a few votes short of that, but they ended up censuring her as well. Um, talk to us a little, t tell me a little bit about what was going on behind the scenes of this. Why were Republicans so angry about this? She didn't steal the Bible. She, why wasn't this handled behind closed doors? Well, I. You know, I think there was an attempt to handle it behind closed doors. I just think it leaked a little bit more than, than we're used to. Um, and clearly, you know, the Republicans were making a move for expulsion. Um, I think in this particular, I mean, I think we've developed a little bit of a hair trigger on these ethics investigations. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the bar has gotten a little bit lower uh, than it was, say, four or five, six years ago. Um, and it's dangerous. I mean, I think people have a tendency to forget that regardless of whether you're the majority party now, you could very well be the minority party tomorrow. And would you want to be treated that same way? Um, so I, this is... I, th I think probably the appropriate sentence was handled out, um, mm -hmm. but it got a lot hotter and a lot more contentious than, frankly, I thought it would be. And do you think this was a little bit of payback for Liz Harris, the Republican lawmaker, who was actually expelled this year uh, for bringing um, people to a committee hearing um, it, who exp espoused a bunch of conspiracy theories, wild conspiracies that the governor on down were involved with drug cartels. So they kicked her out for that. And that was a vote, a bipartisan vote, obviously, with that. But do you think some of this vote over the Bible stuff was just trying to with some get back from Republicans? It's, it's that's likely. I mean, I think it reflects the contentious na nature down there between both parties. You know, I look at something like that as much more serious than what Representative Stella Hamilton, you know, did, which is something that she said was a joke, something that she apologized for. And I think the censure, uh, you know, movement was just a waste of everybody's time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that censures, you know, let's say should be reserved for people saying discriminatory and violent things at white supremacist conferences, which we've seen before, yeah. uh, and something like that, not something like this Bible gate. Yeah, well, you know, I know she did say it's a joke. Let's hope that Stahl Hamilton sticks with her career in politics because that was a really strange joke because <laughs> nobody else seemed to be in on it. But yeah, I don't, anyway, I don't think she'll be doing a comedy <laughs> tour anytime no, soon. No. So let's move on. The other big other big piece of news this week is we had an abrupt resignation from uh, Senator Steve Kaiser. Steve Kaiser was the one, as we were talking about in the segment before, he was the one who was pushing for um, some housing legislation uh, to to deal with that situation. That f fell through, and a couple of days later, he says he's out. He's up. He's he's, he's done. Um, do you think that was tied to that vote and to the housing stuff, or do you think this was something else behind his resignation? I, I don't think it was tied to that specifically. I will be. I've had conversations uh, with Senator Kaiser as early as December, even before the legislature started, um, and you know, frankly, it, the process wore on him. Um, I, I think he. I think he fell out of love with the job rather quickly, and um, he didn't particularly love the environment. Um, he went through sort of some rough patches on, on zoning and some other things. And this is a guy who, one, a veteran, started his own business, successfully built that business, sold that business. He's an entrepreneur at heart. And I think at the end of the day, he said, you know, I'm wasting a lot of time around here. I'm away from my kids, which are very important to him and his family, and I'm better off going to earn a buck and, and running a new company. Yeah, now the process moves, shifts to like picking the replacement uh, in that district. In, in that district, now this is the district that's North Phoenix. Um, you know, Roy. You know, looking at the map there, I mean, it, we, we got to wait and see who's who's tapped there. But this is a pickup opportunity next year for Democrats in that area, correct? Absolutely. I mean, it's one of the most um, competitive districts that we have in the legislature. And of course, we have to remember that Republicans have a one seat majority in the Senate, but just like they do in the House. So it's going to be very contested. You know, one of the things that I'm looking for in this pick, I mean, of course, the, the PCs are going to have to come up with a list of replacements. And it's this eternal problem that Republicans have been facing, over, you know, really since the Trump era, is do you pick a Trumpian type candidate to replace him? who's going to hurt you in the general election, or do you pick somebody that's more reasonable and you can keep the seat? And that's going to be the question going forward. Yeah, and what do you expect as far as the, the, the precinct committee members? What kind of, what type of candidate do you think they're going to put forward? There's going to be three. Yeah, I... They I, move to the county and then the county picks one of them. Right, I agree with Roy that this is one of... 
three of the most competitive districts in the state of Arizona, millions of dollars spent by every group you can possibly imagine on this race. I think that these, when you look at the history of these precinct committeemen, uh, I think it was two weeks ago they tried to do a censure mo uh, motion on, uh, on uh, one of their state representatives who's a Republican. I expect all three to be very, uh, very, very conservative. And, you know, to, sp to speaking about, the, you know, whether you put a Trumpian candidate up there or not, I mean, this is a district that falls within uh, County Supervisor Bill Gates's uh, district here at the county. Do you think that, you know, and typically tradition goes that the, that supervisor takes the lead and makes the recommendations for the, for the board to vote on on replacements at the legislature. Do you think Mr. Gates, who is admitted that he has PTSD from being harassed by election deniers will have any stomach if, if the precinct committee members put forward three election deniers to choose from. Do you think he'll have any stomach to try to choose one of them? He, he may not. I mean, that's going to be the trick. I mean, I have to admire uh, Supervisor Gates for all of the things he's done in standing up to the lies, I think, that a lot of the Trump folks have put forward over the la you know, last few years. And he's been attacked for it, as you mentioned. And he's not running for re-election again. Um, so that may mean that he basically says, I'm not accepting any of these candidates. And we're kind of in this weird nether world about how do we proceed going forward. Yeah, and, and, and obviously the law says they have to make a pick, but it doesn't. But you can use you can do the time thing, right? Because it doesn't say when you have to make the pick, right? I, they're going to make a pick. I mean, the law is pretty clear on this, and frankly, I you know I I don't think we should exacerbate the situation any more than it already is. Um, and so I think that the board will 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 have to make one of these picks. All right, we're going to have to end it right there. But that's all the time we have this week. Be sure to join us for more politics unplugged next week. Good night.